Uh, DeRosa and Emily Gullickson with you to preview uh, what I thought was a blockbuster 12 race card headlined by the Indiana Derby race 12 of 12 on Saturday at Horseshoe Indianapolis, but plenty of stakes, some interesting maiden races, uh, really the, the whole card, I would say, demands your attention if you are playing on Saturday and someone who perhaps agreed even uh, more so with that than I did because she came right out of the gate and said, if we're doing a video, let's do the whole card, is Emily Gullickson. And uh, I'm glad you did say that, Emily, because uh, there's uh, these are, I thought, pretty competitive races. Absolutely. I think this card is great from, from start to finish. And I know a lot of attention will fall on some of the later races because they're races and you know, they're horses people are comfortable with or more familiar with. But, you know, you mentioned beforehand, I know I follow, follow the grids on Twitter and, you know, <laughs> playing, playing horse in Indianapolis day in and day out. It's a, it's a tough circuit. We're a little bit probably more familiar with some people that are going to jump in on a Saturday because it is that big card and giving out information. I mean, it, Horseshoe Indianapolis, it's a tough meet. It's one that I've been following for years, you know, back in your days over at, at Brisbane and Twin Spires hired me to, to work on that meet. And I've been covering it ever since for optics, um, doing trip notes and following it. And it's a, it's a lot like, um, Woodbine in the sense that it's a it's a very long meet starts in April goes all the way into November uh, a lot of horses a lot of racing four days a week and you just start getting familiar with these horses especially in these claiming and state bred level races where you know trips comes into play form cycle comes into play they could run a huge race that'll look exceptional on paper and then just those subtle nuances hmm. will make a big difference and um, you know you putting out, putting out the grid and hitting those scores and the, the low takeout. I just think there's, there's so much good information on this card and wanted to get it out in front of people that are going to be jumping in. Yeah. And uh, in addition to the full 12 races uh, starting at noon, I think the last is at six forty, So it's seven hours of thoroughbred excitement, but uh, it is part of the cross country pick five as well. So even for those, maybe not playing the, the full card, they may dip into that with the Naira races. And as you noted, you and I are familiar with Horseshoe Indianapolis. We, we play it, you know, probably more than some others jumping in for Derby day uh, in general, when you're looking like thistle down uh, a couple weeks ago, might be a good example. They had the Ohio Derby. It's, it's a new track to a lot of people. How do you familiarize yourself with, you know, is it how the track's playing? Is it jockey trainer trends? What are some things you kind of want to be familiar with when you're playing a track that isn't, in your case, like Hawthorne or for me, a, a Churchill Downs? Well, I, I mean, I feel as home at Horseshoe Indianapolis that I do at Hawthorne at this point, um, <laughs> just because I, I follow both like pretty pretty closely. Uh, obviously, more more visible at Hawthorne um, this year in particular, but. All those things that you mentioned as far as the track bias, as far as trends, because that that leads to to form, right? And and zooming out on doing trip notes of why horses run good races and bad races and what puts them in position to potentially be running a good race or a bad race for that day. Um, and and those things that are not seen on paper, right? Because pe most people are just going to be looking at the form, go to the things that they find familiar, looking for the horse finishing first, second, and third in their last race, um, and not understanding kind of the context of, of that necessarily. And so it's hard to do. And part of the reason that I talked about doing full card, not only because I, I think there's, there's opportunities in the early part of the card, is there's, there's so much that isn't going to be seen on those running lines. And I don't think, you know, in the Indiana Derby or in the Indiana Derby, people probably go back and, and watch the races, right? Get familiar, do their replay work, but not as many people are going to do so in this state bred maiden special weight race with a full field to open up the card, right? Absolutely. And, and so they'll lean on some of the horses that look a little bit more obvious and there might be something uh, under the surface. All right. Well, uh, that, admittedly is uh, I'm, I'm a surface guy uh, admittedly now price in my mind helps be the arbiter there where maybe I'm giving up some value not digging in as much on the trips unless I have access to to your information but uh, in the opener which as you noted uh, st state bred maidens and we'll get our share of Indiana breads as we work through the card six furlongs and you know I would note uh, at least this before yesterday, which was washed off the turf. So you had some short fields as well. 
um, which definitely I would say more favors speed than others. But, you know, the track does play forward. Um, there are definitely spots throughout the meet where you'll have a two or three week stretch where two thirds or more of the races are run on the front end. And we had a stretch like that in June, um, which some of these horses are probably running back from that time period. Uh, my first glance at the opener was speed in the rail look pretty tough in here. So I'm curious if this is one of those races that's uh, more than meets the eye or if it kind of does what it says on the tin. Well, you have you have horses in here that are coming off layoffs, that are coming off trips, and they might not have shown what their what their running style is um, this far. I mean, you kind of start. I guess you're starting from the inside, right, um, Berea? Right. That's kind of where you said speed on yeah. the inside. Yeah. I mean, they've they've had pace pressure in both those races. Kind of faded late. Hasn't necessarily been super fast paces. And there's some others in here that have been able to show speed at times. Um, again, a lot of horses that might have not been on necessarily faster paces. But if you are kind of looking for the speed of this field, that would be number eight, CVC and Legacy, which might not have been a maiden if not for getting a little bit drifty in the lane mm -hmm. because they were the unofficial winner that day and probably best, you know, rushed up, stayed on best of the speed. That was a very fast pace. Um, a horse that was making their second start ran a very solid speed figure on terms of optics figures is actually a faster figure in their debut than the unofficial win. Um, so that horse to me has, has the pace advantage of the horses in this race. Um, as I mentioned, they're, I think there's maybe a little bit more to the story. You have a horse like number seven, Evil Intentions, right? A horse that debuted last October 31st, had some issues at the gate that day. Um, so maybe this horse is capable of showing a little bit more speed. They were fractious in the gate, finished in the blanket for minors. It was a pace setting winner. They were wide throughout. Comes back off that 250 day layoff, four very capable connections, ran a very solid 60 speed figure that was as a juvenile. So could be a horse that's faster and has more early speed than it looks like on paper. Um, and then another horse that probably haven't seen the best of yet is number 10, Saharan Fleece. And Saharan Fleece showed early speed on debut. They were the first to quit, but that is, um, they were bet down that day. The bar necessarily not as strong with first time starters. The horses can pop up in their second start, which you'd expect um, on June 21st, that common race. And that race was very sneaky, better than look. This horse had legitimate trouble at the start. So they were unable to show their early speed that day. And then they were not asked for run in those early stages of the race. And this horse came with a huge close. So I know that this horse has early speed. I know they have finishing ability and I know that they look terrible on paper. <laughs> so those are the type of horses that I, I'm going to gravitate towards and, you know, 30 to one, it, I, I could see it. Maybe that's, that's the case. Um, but definitely one that, you know, you can go back and watch those races and you'll, you'll be able to see it. Another one that, um, Julie Forever coming out of that June 20th race. I think that's a common race with Berea, that seventh race that day, had a complete excuse. Um, I don't know how good this horse is, has to show a little bit more, but never had a chance that day, was in tight, checked around the turn. The rider wrapped up after, and that was the first start back up a long layoff. Going back to the races last year, um, they debuted in October, maybe it wasn't quite right for those races, uh, some subtle trips. So maybe that one hasn't moved forward. So I just think there's a little bit more kind of under the surface than some of those horses that, you know, you kind of see those stronger finishing positions. When, when talking about a horse uh, like Saharan Fleece, because it is interesting with, you know, did make speed on debut and taking a lot more money than it did second time, time out. And then in the second effort showed more run uh, late and even past horses, which is something I appreciate and sort of the, the lower end maiden ranks. Would you say for a winning race, you would expect her to be closer or do you think the, the close where she got the better figure, at least on Bristnet as I'm looking at it, is going to be more a winning style if she were to put it all together? Um. Sorry, I was looking at two different horses when I said the speed figure. The speed figure last on June twenty first was higher. Sorry, I was looking at two. Yeah, different no, uh, the, the one you were talking about at the time did I knew. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. No, All right, sorry. Um, that yeah, that was that was C. Uh, uh, I was just pointing out that we're looking at different numbers, so it got it. Possible okay. That um, yeah, I mean, I I just the horse had legitimate trouble in the, at the start on June twenty first. So the fact that it came from off the pace had to do with the the trouble at the start. Um, so I don't know what this horse, where this horse is going to be. I would expect they're going to show a little bit more speed um, just because that seems like what they're 
naturally inclined to do, but can pass horses as well. So I, I don't know. That's what's tough about trying to do pace in some of these maiden races because the rider, the rider could say, oh, we, we ran on late last time, you know, let's, or we're making a rider change today. Let's take back and try to make a run. I, you know, I have no idea. I just know there's right. a lot more to this horse than what uh, it might look like on paper. Well, and that's a, a big price. And, uh, you know, I'm, enjoy playing multi-race wagers, but, you know, don't always necessarily need to have a, a winner at 30 to one to, to make some money off it. So if this one's able to be in the mix, uh, could be a, a good start to the day. So you, you've certainly convinced me on the 10, uh, number five, truly forever, though, I, I might need to to take an even closer look. I'm not sure I'm there with you. Yeah, on that, that one's more, more of a longer shot, but it's <laughs> just one of those that sometimes when, when it, you know, a horse like that wins and then people go like, where did it come from? You can kind of start being like, well, I could, I could <laughs> see it, but the, of the group, probably the least, the least likely. Well, certainly uh, happy to hear you make some cases against the favorite in the opening leg, because uh, there is a, at least on paper, certainly a, a formidable favorite, although he is on a uh, or she is on a six race losing streak to start her career. Uh, but obviously, this is a, a big uh, class difference coming in from Naira. She's four to five on the morning line. Uh, she's tried dirt and turf, only sprinting though, which uh, I think is uh, interesting. Uh, but I am speaking of Roman Goddess and. Usually when your odds on on the morning line, that means you're looking at two to five uh, at the off and uh, certainly understand why a lot of people would gravitate toward this one, at least on Brisnet, certainly the most likely winner, just, you know, looking at the usual data points and understandable why it'd be the favorite. I'm not really sure one to two is uh, the right price, though. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, this horse probably seems like is the most likely. It's where if you're handicapping this race, you have to start from and where you have to start picking holes in. Um, her one race back on November 18th at Churchill Downs is the strongest speed figure in this field, but her other races since aren't much of an edge over the other horses in this field, right? So from that standpoint, it's not like she's she's overwhelming. Now, you mentioned the class, obviously, coming out of those races, this is going to be the softer spot, but She's also shown how fast she is. She's had those races, hasn't really shown much progression from that juvenile season. They thought she'd move up on the turf, didn't really do so. So now we're back to the back to the main track, to a different circuit. There could be some signs of desperation, could be they're landing in the right spot, just catching a softer field. But as you mentioned, is going to kind of be that heavy favorite because she seems like the quote unquote safer option in this hmm. field. Um, where, you know, to me, I, I'm going to try to get creative with Callie's passion. And uh, in terms of numbers, her September 16th race at Churchill Downs was a 77. That was also as a two-year-old, so could project and move forward. She broke slow at Churchill Downs. That was for that $30,000 um, claiming tag that she was claimed out of. And I don't think people are going to be familiar with this trainer because there's not a lot of, a lot of information, right? But you know, I just um, see 0 for one. Right. I did a little bit more kind of digging um, with with as far as like the ownership group and, and who this trainer has been like kind of connected with. And um, it's Philip Sims, Thomas Drury, who are pretty well known trainers, especially on the Kentucky circuit and certainly capable with these type of horses. Now, this ownership group. Um, so if you kind of just, you know take the trainer name with a grain of salt because there's just no, you know, there's no real data. It's like a first time starter, right? Um, the ownership group showed up in the circuit last year. It was a Keeneland shipper, um, won a maiden special weight race with a filly called Baby Blue Eyes. She ran off the screen here at Horseshoe Indianapolis, was uh, six and a half to one, was ridden by Mojica. Mojica's aboard today. I just think this horse is super live. And, you know, I don't, it maybe Roman goddess is, is just too tough, but um, I am going to have to use because it's just too creative to not um, in the face of a heavy favorite that I don't fully trust. Yeah, no, I, I can't disagree. I, I thought uh, Kate's concerto to the inside uh, 10 to one morning line, but gets uh Bayerano, um, you know, certainly nothing against the, the local contingent that's, that's been aboard throughout other than the, the debut on turf with Florent, but you know, Raphael certainly trust and has had a lot of chances, but uh, 
you know, with Roman Goddess in here, who I figure being a big favor is going to have to go. So hopefully, you know, someone keeps her company because you're always susceptible to just blitzing the field at Horseshoe Indianapolis. But I, I do think Kate's Concerto can be one of the ones running late. Ten to one seemed like the right number. Yeah, no knocks on her. Her race back on May 9th, that was like a winning type race for the level. Um, so no knocks there. Well, uh, certainly beating Roman Goddess uh, would, would help blow up uh, the pick four starts here, the pick five starts in the opener. Do you do anything with first time Lasix? Is that something that is on your mind? Uh, you know, I, I look at it. I look at it more in terms of intent, right? As far as like when the timing of it, you know, maybe even the type of horse off the visuals. But overall, I just don't see I don't see a whole lot um, of, of change. But I think intent comes into play. Makes sense. Uh, While well, we stay sprinting on the dirt, we return to the Indiana bred uh, Gene Pool uh, in the third uh, forty-one thousand allowance race. I went to the far outside. I, I, eight to one uh, intrigued me on Cowboy Image. Uh, like the fact that this one's able to attend the pace. Uh, finally broke through last time. Uh, this is purely anecdotal. I've always uh, just kind of thought, you know, what to me at the state bred level, especially. I'm not so sure that N2L uh, is that much of a class hike from the maiden ranks, just depending on the competitiveness of the maiden races, which admittedly all aren't created equal. Uh, this horse uh, had a lot of backing at the windows, finally got it done last time. Uh, it just feels like one of those where if you were talking about a favorite, plenty of holes to poke, but at eight to one and admittedly the morning line at, at Horseshoe Indianapolis can be a moving target, but I, I feel like, this is at least going to be a $10 horse and that's good enough for me. Yeah. I mean, I think we kind of looked at it the same way, just in the sense that, you know, solar power, Butch's best are fine, but um, not quite shown enough at this level. So to get creative, um, the horse that to me is like a must use in this spot is Mariachi Justice. Um, Mariachi Justice, knowing kind of Contreras, how he, he runs horses, that second off pattern, so I can excuse the May 6th race off the 166-day layoff, projecting that move forward on May 24th. That was a big effort. The horse closed ground in its hide. You mentioned before um, the, how this course can be tough to close over. This horse had to do so down inside. And then as far as that June 15th race, I mean, that's a race that you can pretty much just excuse. Um, a broke slow, better than looked effort, made a move through traffic, had legitimate trouble. The overall visuals are like, this horse can compete back under similar conditions, gets back to those similar conditions today. I already know this horse can run at this level from the race to back, can show more tactical speed going back to their maiden win. Um, there was some intent with this horse, ran very well on debut. They ran in a stakes race, um, still as a maiden, just the right time and place that, you know, same idea as you, kind of that horse that's a little bit under the radar, still slightly improving. Um, and then coming off that trip is just a must use. Isn't it surprising that a horse named Caboose likes to run on the front end? <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you can't pick your own name, right? That's true. <laughs> I, that's a, it's a weird name. For, so you wouldn't really want to telegraph uh, a, a name like that, I would think for horse be careful what you name your horses but yeah i mean this is just uh, another one where three deep already where uh the favorites just don't have to win i mean and, right. and not from a i mean sometimes you reach a little bit because you want to beat the chalk um I, i've learned more and more that it's okay to pass those types of races if you feel like you're reaching too far to to beat a favorite but you know, through three, uh, I mean, even the, even the odds on in the second, I just feel like there's legitimate, like these are going to be underlays and where's the opportunity. I would say this is the race where I feel strongest that there actually is an opportunity, though. In race four or race three? Uh, well, race, race three. three uh, okay, especially. yeah. But yeah, uh, race four, I, I thought um, I would actually maybe go so far as to say Hardy Constitution interested me more than certainly Roman goddess. If, you know, I'm looking wh where I want to hang my hat, you know, if you're a need a single type, which I don't advocate that you always need one, but uh, you know, to me, this race, I felt like if I were going deeper than Hardy constitution, I'd just kind of be betting against 
the horse I actually think fits at an okay price. I mean, two to one isn't great, uh, but I do like that, you know, Hernandez sees fit to get aboard and, you know, they, they've kind of been all over with this one. The, the, the ship to Penn, to me, it was a huge sign of confidence. I mean, turf, he's a Pennsylvania bred. They cashed a check, but I mean, they fired a bullet for a hundred thousand dollar purse. So they had to feel pretty strongly. He was one to 10. Uh, so it came through in that regard. But to me, that this one makes sense at two to one. If if they run here, right? Because she has cross-entered on somewhere else on this card. Uh, um, or I don't know, maybe you've heard that they're going to run in this spot. No, I just took for granted. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, to me, that's where I just, just kind of like, I don't know where the confidence is on this horse um, because she was scratched out of the Florida League. There ended up being what only three horses in that race, right. um, and now they're cross entered on on this card. Um, it's just a, it's another one hundred thousand dollars stakes race. Not like you're you know okay we won on the main track we won on the dirt let's try to you know let's try to go after some of these purses. I don't know just the lack of confidence. A horse is going to come from off the pace. Um, you know last out they closed into a slow pace and just kind of seemed like the class of the field, but has a tendency to break slow. Um, I don't know. I just, I had a hard time just kind of gauging where, where she is and that care. And I, I'm not going to repeat myself. So I'll say the same thing when we get to the, the other race, um, little King's princess could be in the right time and place just in terms of running style, uh, has form over this course, has fast speed figures, was competitive at Oakland park, could just be controlling speed in here. And then I thought take a stand makes a lot of sense as well. Um, one that's probably just been kind of improving in terms of form cycle wise could be cycling to a top has some competitive races under similar listed stakes out in Kentucky, kind of more, more logical in here. Not a super strong opinion in this race. Um, didn't care for the outside two horses though. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, I'm sort of with you on the, not a strong opinion other than for me, heavy constitution. And uh, again, it, I wish I wish I knew. Uh, assuming he stays in here, uh, excuse me, she stays in here. Uh, how much zest there would be for her in, in the pick ends? Because I think it at two to one, you know, slightly less than a third of the pool with takeout. That's fair. Um, but mm -hmm. if, if people go nuts and you know the wind board opens up at four to five, I feel a little more sheepish about it. So. Uh, you know, I think scratches will, will tell the tale, but it's just one of those races where I'm not like comfortable even two or three deep. So to me, I'd just rather say, well, here's my most likely winner in the morning line fits. So I'll, I'll take a stand, but obviously scratches are going to, but you won't take a, a stand literally. I'll, I would single that horse. You're totally or are you saying it's not a stand if it's the favorite? I'm saying the number four horse is called Take a Stand. Oh. And I was trying to make a joke, but <laughs> now I'm at the point where I'm explaining the joke and what yeah, it's that, also that, funny. But as okay. you know, I've been there. <laughs> I've had to explain many a joke. Uh, well, we are on the turf. Uh, we've been off for a little bit, but back on uh, Saturday, weather forecast looks good. Uh, so certainly handicapping for the sod. Uh, another stakes race and uh, a, a full field uh, to me. Uh, these turf races, uh, you speak to this more than, than I, but, uh, you know, a lot of times you, the rider does need to find some room. If you're not in the, the front tier, uh, trips really come into play. Not that they don't on dirt, but this turf race, there's, there's a lot of movement. Um, so, you know, to me, wa watching can pay dividends and being familiar with the circuit and star wisher on the far outside, uh, you know, to make the lead, maybe gate to wire is the way to go like last time. Uh, but for me, it, it's tough to win from out there against Stakes Company. Yeah. And, and and just in terms of the big change, right? Had the rail last out a lot easier to get to the lead than it is from post 12, assuming everybody stays in the race and there's other speed to their inside. So it kind of have to use, you assume Ease Magic is going to be out there in front, stretching out a distance and showing speed. Um, I kind of went a similar way to just overall with you in race four with number one corning stone because i just think she's the fastest she's the classiest she's in form um going from there's been some distance limitations in the past so 
I know it doesn't seem like a lot at mile and a 16th to a mile, but for this horse, I think it does, it does make a difference. Even the mile and 70 is fine. She won that in the Miss Indiana was dominant in that race, um, which is a state bred stakes race, um, had a really good effort in the other state bred stakes race, the back home again last year, just was extra wide throughout, was never going to win with that trip and the way the race shape um, turned out and just showed a lot of class to finish second. And then as far as, as far as the surface switch, I mean, they thought that she'd be fine on the turf. You know, you're going to send in Indiana bred to Saratoga <laughs> to run on the turf. You know, that's, that's a, a pretty live sign, you know, given, given a lot of options, she ran well, um, you know, the race that she finished third in back on July 24th. Um, that was that kind of messed up race a little bit, but then, but the real thing is just speed figure wise. She was running consistent speed figures on the turf to her dirt races that time of year. So that just kind of tells me that she's able to translate whatever form she's in to the surface. So I, I would understand why people are a little bit cautious because of the surface switch, but she has those races on the turf. The numbers uh, definitely aren't there. So um, not what really sure. What, and I'm moving on to my neck. The next tour. Yeah. Corningstone oh, okay. absolutely fits, but sassy Katie uh, attracted my eye. Uh, certainly it would seem they want the lead. That might be tough because uh, single her and the possible favorite number twelve both have speed from the outside. They're going to want position, but it seems like maybe Sassy Katie could end up ground saving behind them. Uh, the numbers wise, doesn't seem like she'd have the punch to outkick those behind her. Uh, but just on paper, I see a lot of ones, and it doesn't seem like she's run bad races. Any thoughts on her at twenty to one morning line? Uh, I mean, those two combinations together, right? Like a 20 to one shot that you think has some upside and can potentially get a trip. I mean, her races, there's nothing to knock. She's competitive each time she comes out on the track. It's just a matter of, you know, is she just running to our competition? Um, and then that would, you know, put her right. I mean, her numbers aren't that far off from the other horse in this field. I mean, Corningstone stands out number wise, but if you remove her from the field, uh, Sassy Katie looks as good as any, doesn't she? I mean, just uh, on, from, on, Bruce, on Bruce and I, which she's a touch below ease magic. Okay. Um, but ease magic, we don't really know because she's never gone long. She's never gone on the turf. Sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. And then star wisher, um, corning stones quicker than her, but um, that number at Keeneland, uh, for yeah, Star Wisher is, is clearly second, um, looking at Bruce Nett. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, after that, I mean, that's a good point. If it's kind of like, well, state bread allowance does what it takes to win, you know, it's pretty rare. You run off the screen in those types of races, especially on turf. Um, so, you know, what, what would you want anyway? So, um, yeah, at, at 20 to one, she's going to be in the mix for me. Sure. No, no, Unless you had said, Ed, don't believe those races are the worst I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Even at 20 to 1, I, I would have trusted you on that. But, yeah, that that's enough for me that they weren't uh, overly uh, negative, but not even negative at all. Uh, race 6, back to the state bred uh, maiden ranks and uh, another another robust field. Uh, the also eligible Philip Snow, I would, uh, wouldn't would mind seeing draw in uh, less uh, – concerned about speed from the outside on, on the main track, especially sprinting, uh, having speeds important. We haven't talked much about jockey talent, but Ramos certainly having a, a great meet. And one thing uh, Brisnet does is they do let you know how they are with certain uh, pace types and he's 25% with a, a big ROI on speed horses. So to, to me, Philip Snow drawing in, maybe once you get to the race, uh, we'll see where the value would be depending on who scratches to get him in especially. Uh, but that would be, to me, a, a must use for 13. I just feel, you know, even though the computers are smart enough now, they know the 13's in, but still on the big day, I do like to use those AEs when they they draw in and, and feel like you get a little extra, at least in the, the pick ends that end in this race. So... Th that's sort of my thought now, hoping it'll draw in. But uh, th this is, uh, you know, th there's a lot of speed here too. So interesting. Yeah, I, I, I spent the, the kind of the least amount of time handicapping this race because there there could be two, we could be looking at two different races right now, right? Because if the 13 and 14 draw in, that's a completely different race than if right. they don't draw in. 
And, and so then if it's they like, did I draw them, it's which to scratch to draw them in, which that exactly. is. Exactly. Right. Because if, if, the, if they stay in 1 through 12, the 13 and 14 go out, that makes the job so much easier on Lucky's Joy, the stable mate to Philip Snow, and Big City Heat, just as far as horses, you know, for the place. Right. Those horses, you know, their job gets a little bit tougher with those other two in the field. But maybe those two scratch. It's like. I don't really know. So I'm not, hey, I'm not going to spend a lot of time handicapping this until I kind of know what I'm dealing with, just because it's going to change that race shape so much. And both the, the also eligibles make sense to me. Um, those other two would upgrade with those out just from a pay standpoint. Um, Jenny's beignet would probably also benefit from those other two. One that's a, a big price in here, kind of a, a plotty type horse, but plotty type at a big price with that kind of run style in this race. And then, um, Nine pointer is just one to kind of mention. Um, their race last out, that second place finish, a, a B optics grade. So that's like a winning type effort for the level. Um, and that was with the weather conditions that day and the first start around two turns. Uh, Star Review, number six, another one that's kind of shown some run in spots this season that could move forward. Uh, Reiteration, another one that could be just sitting on a peak effort. Reiteration is kind of sneaky. This is the same connections from um, the 10 horse in the opener. Uh, their third start back off the third start back off the layoff last year is where this horse ran a peak effort. So now they're kind of repeating that same form cycle in that third start with progression. So one to keep in the mix. But again, I, I just didn't really do any kind of fine tuning on this race until I know what I'm dealing with. But um, yeah, some ideas. Some ideas. I like ideas. Yeah, but we're, the AEs totally change the complexion, uh, especially if both draw in, uh, but even e one of them could, because uh, that means another one's out. Back to the turf, uh, certainly one of my favorite named stakes races, the Snack Handicap, one mile uh, for Indiana Breads. And let's see here. I thought there is, I cannot imagine uh, any time I really like a horse, I cannot imagine 10 to one, a number eight anchor man, um, half that would be fine with me. I actually think this might even be the most likely winner. And the, I mean, just not, the way I handicap, I don't find 10 to ones who are the most likely winner. I might like horses that are worth 10 to one, uh, for reasons that I, oh, they should be six or five to one. Um, but when I think, the line is this far off. It usually is. So I have no idea where things will actually end up on Anchorman. Uh, but another one of those types of things, sort of like the AE coming in from a multi-race standpoint, you know, I would plant my flag certainly in a closing leg here where people are seeing the 10 to one. But uh, I just think the two races we've seen from this one on the turf, one a winning effort against state bred maidens, uh, is right there with any of these. Yeah, and um, this horse makes makes a lot of sense. Looks very solid on the plot, big square, right where you want to be on both standard current form and surface distance. So no knocks that way. Um, was a blanket finish in the turf at Keeneland. Obviously, much tougher race, hundred thousand dollar purse. Kind of moved up into a solid pace, and then obviously. Uh, did what needed to be done on May 10th. Um, it was a late lead change, but the rider, the, this is kind of the big upside. I mean, major rider upgrade, especially from Jane Elliott. She's just a little bit on the weaker side. Um, so, I mean, you're getting a, a complete journeyman rider, maybe one of the top riders in this race, if not the, um, makes a lot of sense. I think, you know, Keen, Keen, King Ice, not Keen Ice, a uh, different horse completely. Uh, King Ice is very legitimate as well as the favorite. Um, he had to close into no pace last out to just miss. And kind of like the same thing with Corningstone earlier. I mean, this horse started on the turf, and that might have been a function of races around two turns for these two-year-olds that time of year. But speed figure-wise was holding their speed figures, you know, not quite to the level of the open company, moved to the circuit, and it's just been really strong. Uh, there's just, you know, there's just no knocks in either of those races. It was very warm and wide coming off the layoff, um, probably a prep. And then again, you know, in terms of the stakes race where they were well met, had to do so much to finish second. I mean, that horse was probably best on the day. Um, the winner saved ground throughout, had a perfect trip. So I just have no, you know, no knocks on that horse. But, um, you know, same thing with Anchorman. Makes a lot of sense at, at a big price. And then a couple of horses in here that are going to, 
uh, move to the turf for the first time that I think are going to move up on the surface switch are number two, Double Dog Justice, just based on the visuals, another horse that was a better than looked effort in the Hoosier Breeder sophomore stakes, considering there wasn't much pace, the top two together at the wire, this horse closed through traffic. And then Good Forever is one of a bunch of horses in here for Gennaro Garcia, another horse that um, tried the turf for the first time, but it's looked like a turf horse to me since their debut last year. So two longer shot horses that might might get in the mix. And uh, you, you read my mind because there, I think I counted seven uh, horses that, assuming they start here, would be making their turf debut. You and I have polar opposite approaches to assessing uh, the, the surface switch. I definitely rely on pedigree. You do not, uh, which is fine, <laughs> of course. Uh, we all have our own our own methods. Uh, but when you say, I mean, you specifically said on the, the two looks – to be able to handle it. Is that, you know, based on action when you're watching races? Is it trainer pattern? What, no, what it's based on this that? on this individual horse, that this in, individual horse is telling me, whatever reason, it's not like, you know, it's the same for each horse that they can handle the turf. Could be action, could be the way that they're built, could be the way that they carry their stride, their body, their head, their neck. For whatever reason, I just know that the surface switch is is probably a fit for both those horses. And that that's a note you actually keep. That's like a key word, right? You use yes. turf in a note that um, – now, do you only use that if they've never been on turf? Uh, no. No, no, no. There's a um, – well, here's like a – here's an example. Jay's, Jay's Naughty Boy was turf, turf note on May 9th. They moved to the turf, and the horse almost won that race at almost 14 to one. Um, there's a couple other horses that have been probably on the turf and once they're on it, you kind of know at that point, I'm not just right. keep, yeah, and that, know, that's reiterating what like it. Once but you're on it, th yeah. if they go back to dirt, you're less likely to give a turf keyword. Yeah. That backyard justice is another horse. That horse had a, had a turf keyword back on October 29th of last year. They finally put the horse on turf this year. <laughs> Like, come on, <laughs> we've, been, yeah. we've been waiting, you know, and like the horse just responds uh, to the surface, switch. but then a horse like, like spot on justice. I don't have a turf note on it. I, you know, probably can handle it. I just isn't one that I necessarily think is going to like move up on the surface. Right. You know, now, have you ever made a note of like, let's say it's a, a maker or a Brown, like a, a, or any trainer, but you know, one, especially in your head, you would think, well, that these guys, do turf a lot would you know like oh man if they go to turf i do not want to bet this horse like don't get sucked in type of reminder it, it, again it's just i mean i'm pretty much just looking at the horse itself and what they're what they're telling me that's but will you make will you know like no turf so when they do show up if it's a turf race you know like you've already thought this would not be good for, or will you just go back and watch knowing that they're on turf now? Um, I, I think it'd probably be kind of like the case I said was, was spot on justice. It's not necessarily a horse that I think is going to necessarily move up on the surface, which we pretty much try to reserve that keyword for, for those horses that, you know, could make a, a five, 10 point, you know, whatever type of improvement with that surface switch. Um, but, you know, spot on justice could run those same races on the turf. Sure. You know, so okay. so one of those other horses. I saw another one. Peter's Can Peter's canvas was another horse that was a turf question mark, um, and that horse won last out. Improved on the turf, had some traffic, May tenth, and then won on the lead on June twenty fourth. But another horse said the turf keywords. All right. Well, uh, in my head, I'm I'm thinking uh, in a week we have Colonial and Saratoga opening, and uh, a lot of I think turf moves uh both of those circuits uh big races on on the grass so uh lessons we talk about plenty of uh, aptitude uh for all circuits uh but especially saturday at indiana with plenty of turf stakes action and stakes pick five action in race eight and uh, i thought the schaefer was uh pretty competitive and there's some no names in here uh, that i was actually kind of surprised to see uh, one of those uh, names familiar to me is a Ohio Derby winner, uh, actually 12 to one on the line in mass parade. Adam Biskitza comes up again. Uh, I, I'm, 
Uh, I'm curious from you if there's any excuses on the last two. Uh, Dreadful is the favorite in the Knicks go, uh, and then probably just overmatched in the the blame stakes and finds a softer spot here. But uh, gosh, it looked like this one was was poised for a, a big year. I know there was some excitement about his five year old debut. Hasn't lived up to it, but at, at twelve to one, I, I might be forgiving. Uh, I, I think this horse fits. I mean, as far as being the favorite in the Nick go, I think he was a favorite because he was just kind of that wise guy horse. I think his morning line that day was like eight or 10 to one or something. And it was just kind of one of those horses that everybody kind of latched, latched on to. So I don't know if he was right. necessarily the horse that should have been favored in that race, but kind of wound up. So I'll give a pass, 275 day layoff, broke slow that day and then improved. I, I thought the effort in the blame, it was obviously an improving type effort, not the most ideal ride, had traffic that day, um, just a much higher level of competition, rattle and roll, happy American. Both those horses came back and ran well. Um, and what Stephen Foster was at that most recent race. And I mean, as, as far as the Knicks go, the, the form of that race has held up as well. Zozo's three techniques, two horses yeah. that have, have come back and, and done well. So a horse is just improving the third start off the layoff. He's going to find the distance change. He's finding class relief, has the right running style for this race, assuming he doesn't break slow. Um, getting that rider change has been able to show early speed. In terms of the pace, he should be able to sit off. There's, there's four circles in quadrant one, right? So there's all horses that have that kind of tactical speed, but not much finishing ability with Keystone Field, Five Star General, uh, Pat's Property, and uh, Trademark that are all in kind of that position. Mm-hmm. Trademark is, is an EP type, but he's, he's in that position as a circle. Um, and so Mass Parade is sitting in quadrant two. He's kind of split quadrant one, quadrant two, right by the par line. So he should be able to get first run of the circles, and then also first run on probably the main thread in here, which is Creative Minister um, and Britain's Kitten, also another one that that's a square in quadrant uh, four. Same thing with Tart Tufo. I'm not quite sure if that one's true running style, but I just think she get the right trip and the right time. I don't know if the public, because we're both kind of seeing it the same way. Maybe we're we're not getting anywhere near 12 to one and this right. race is favored again. And then uh, it probably won't be favored. I mean, Creative Minister is probably going to be favored in this race um, and for logical reasons, but uh, position wise, Master Rate is sitting kind of in the same spot with Trademark and Promise Keeper and hoping is going to be the better price of those two and as a square versus the circles. I just like Creative Minister, uh, seems like might have too much to do. Uh, possibly, um, uh, possibly, but just class wise, I think he just might Was- be able to be a little bit. Closer. Is Keystone Field one of those circles? Yes. Okay. And his yeah, trip he... is tough from the rail, right? Because right. you know, if he if he doesn't go, then he takes back, and then he's he's kind of in trouble. So you know, and Corrales, I think Corrales typically will send, but he did win from off the pace on <laughs> source. I don't know. He's just a tough read in this spot um, with that <coughs> rail draw. I certainly don't like uh, it. It's a weird. Uh weight distribution to me i was surprised creative ministers one of the the low weights which i guess it's been a while since stakes wins and that's why but uh keystone field one of the high weights at 125 and the rail uh with with speed uh <coughs> excuse me i want to like him hope you're, hope you're doing like, okay over there <laughs> uh, i want to like him it just seems like there's a lot of things conspiring against him yeah yeah so yeah, we'll see what we get on Mass Parade. I mean, but, maybe uh, maybe you end up upgrading him if Mass, you know, if the board is doing weird stuff, right? And all right. of a sudden he's like 15, 20 to one. You're like, well, now we're now we're talking, you know. <laughs> big big difference for sure. Uh yeah. so what are we on? Race nine. nine. Uh back to the turf, uh the Schuster Memorial, all stakes pick four here. And uh I thought uh I thought this was was one of the more likely for me. Uh, with Verstappen, who, uh, you know, I, I actually thought in the Man of War was getting overlooked at 8-1 to one off what he did in the Elkhorn. Um, I saw Declan Cannon was uh, on vacation this week. He tweeted a picture of him hiking. So maybe that explains why uh, he's not here, although I, I can't imagine he wouldn't have wanted to be back for a stakes win. But uh, anyway, I only a hundred thousand so. dollars. That's true. Yeah, there there'll yeah. be there'll only. be other options at Kentucky yeah. Downs. But uh, I thought the Elkhorn uh, at sixteen to one, the horse absolutely fit. And I actually remember betting him on 
Uh, I'm tapping this. You're gonna have to tap. I know. The sign I'm here. doing but, it. We're all tapping the sign right now. I did Let like him in the Kentucky. The I did like him in the Kentucky Cup, and, wow. and thought there was a, a moment no I was gonna get here. really jiggity at nine to one. So I say that to set up why I was so interested in the Elkhorn, um, and uh, kind of followed it through in the Man of War. But he just, to me, he looks. I don't think any horses run races remotely to what this horse accomplished in the Elkhorn of the Kentucky cup. Yeah. I, I, you know, you can't knock that. I mean, he's you know, a, a short price in here, super obvious class speed figures, you know, makes sense. Uh, the distance change can be a hurdle. Um, a lot of times those horses that are running in those longer distance races, it's for a reason. They don't quite have the brilliance to do a mile and that adjustment, it can be significant. Maybe in a race like this, he's able to overcome just being, you know, being the class. But I have that concern for a lot of a lot of the horses in here that are coming out of those longer distance races and now coming back to this distance. And I said it, it could just be a change and people will, fl- will bet their longer distance marathon form thinking, oh, it's going to translate to a mile. And it, it rare it rarely does. It takes, you know, kind of a the, the right horse to kind of do so. And I'm going to try and as I say that, I'm going to take one of those horses um, in Kitten Mischief. And part of, the, part of that reason is actually because this horse has very fast races at a mile. And those are the first two starts, and they were on the dirt. Um, but those were some of his stronger speed figures. The horse that when he ran the Sam F. Davis had that turf keyword. They struggled in that three-year-old season. I'm going to kind of jump back to that, but look kind of like a turf horse. They ended up running the horse on the, on the turf. Just think overall that year, just couldn't get the horse into form, had the layoff lines. They were shipping all over the place. Good, you know, whatever. Found the form at Gulfstream Park on the turf. That was an extremely strong race, winning that optional claiming race, showed a lot of grit and then ran a huge speed figure in that Keeneland race. So just think, it's a horse that probably getting back to that potential that he showed early on has some tactical speed. Um, this rider keeps coming up again. Um, <laughs> I was going to ask you if you're ready for Biscuit to have a big day. Could have a big day. Um, Jonathan Thomas, uh, you know, you talk about following the circuit in barns that are live. This barn is sending out runner after runner. Sometimes at prices, sometimes as favorites. So that one's just enough to me that – could be the right horse in the right time at the right price in this race. So the one I'm, I'm going to try to get creative with in here. Yeah. And uh, that's one of those. I don't think there's a question about the price, like masquerade parade could be yeah. further down. Kitten mischief, certainly going to be uh double digits at the very least. And probably 15 to one. Uh, we do stay on the turf uh, for the next, uh, the Indiana general assembly distaff handicap. So uh, for those uh, that look at weight, that might come into play here. Uh, And it does sort of, to me, uh, for number three, Juncture, uh, who is toting 124, yet given a six to one morning line. And I see Brad Cox. I see a win last out in a stakes. uh, And I'm thinking we're probably not going to get six to one. Uh, So again, it's watch the board and you know, see where things end up. But gosh, this horse was 11 to 10 last out. It's, it's hard to see. I would be six to one here. Uh, Henry at a top them is three to one. And should they go nuts on the Cox, uh, the eight, <laughs> the eight would be, <laughs> the, the eight I'm too would childish be, for this stream. The eight would be the one where I would think, well, maybe the, the price goes up. Neither, neither is going to be a blockbuster though, uh, admittedly. And as we get to the Oaks and Derby, not really sure where the big price might come from there either. So a uh, l- little nervous about how this pick four is shaping up. Uh, you gave a price in the last. Do you have one here or is this one of the more formful races? I, I just kind of had a, a sort of hard time with this race for those reasons. I mean, Henry at a top, I love to race is here, even when she started out her career and just showed just so much class and has been able to continue to put together really strong efforts, even in grade one company, still good effort, just not quite on the level. And Juncture was dominant in that stakes race. And for the connections, I agree with you. It's probably going to be a lot shorter than that morning line. Um, But then, you know, I look at this race on optics plot and it's like, 
why are you trying to get creative? The 10 is going to wire this field. Oh. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> plot, do your thing. You know, I mean, this horse looks like they're, they could, they could wire this field. Um, just has so much speed, just could be able to separate. We'll see how this, co the course, turf course can sometimes play really favorable to speed. So we'll have Absolutely. the early races to kind of see, but there's definitely that scenario for sweet Danny girl. I think the only horse that would be close to her chasing would be um, Puente Avenjuna. And I, she's not one that's necessarily, you know, has those ones in her first and second call. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have a real strong opinion here, so I, I could default to the plot in this, in this case. And I think, uh, it just, he's, he's loaded in, uh, in this card, or at least he, he loaded the, with the card. We'll see how the results uh, indicate trainer Kenny McPeak has another one uh, in this one, lovely princess uh, with Brian Hernandez up another one of those, uh, you know, mile and a half last out. And as a former Brisnet employee and still user of the product, I have found that the numbers uh, on turf with the routes uh, are in the most danger of being inflated. I'm guessing that's what happened here. This horse was pretty steady, mid eighties, upper eighties, uh, throughout her career and then got a 104 uh, when just missing uh, in the Kirtana at Churchill, excuse me, not at Keeneland, uh, but that was a mile and a half and got the biggest number. So I'm guessing when when I run my stuff, that's why it kind of popped up as favorable. Uh, hopefully others will do the same, but nine to two seems a little light. Uh, yeah. Um I, th I think she's fine. I mean, her other her other races, there really wasn't much to knock. I mean, her only bad race um, was the grade two Miss Revere. And then tough to really hold that against her because then she was off 148 days. So, you know, the Churchill turf course at that time, who knows if just something was was a bit of a miss. And now she's could be an improving type. I mean, those are only two starts at four. Um, but I tend to think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, those longer distance turf races, just how they compare. But her other races, if I even excuse that, she fits in this field. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, one of the more formful for sure. Uh, we've yeah. given out some big prices along the way, but that seems like one where uh, would would take a bigger surprise than others. Off to the graded stakes double to close it out, both a mile and a 16th. Uh, on the main track, and uh, I mentioned that because uh, post-wise, uh, I looked at fields just with seven to nine horses as these two are, and the, the rail is pretty strong uh, over the last five years uh, in that situation, but the outside, not terrible, so uh, even, you know, maybe a, a small touch-up to taxed uh, because cotton, can, cotton candy Annie uh, does not factor in this race for me at all, uh, which gives tax sort of the of the inside drawn. Uh, I do move up a little bit. Unfortunately, uh, you know, to me, it's do you trust her or do you trust defining purpose? Eight to five on the line versus taxed. If there were head to head here, interested in taxed. Uh, I. I I went the other way and I, I just, I kind of feel like the, that tax will end up being favored um, because yeah, she's coming off so because she, you know, she's, she's, well, we both, we both agree. So that, that probably settles it, but you know, coming right. off an open length win on like a big day when everybody kind of saw that race first defining purpose, who is probably in a more competitive field, but has that seventh place finish sitting right on top a race that, you know, you can, pretty much give an excuse for her, drew outside that day, was really unable to overcome. And then was also coming off of a peak effort, winning the grade one Ashland, um, had a complete excuse in the honeybee. It's tough to see, but you can go back and look. The horse actually stumbled inside the gate. Pretty odd, but that's that's kind of an excuse. So if I just compare, you know, following Oakland Park, another course that I do trip notes for, but I'm just kind of comparing the Oakland Park races, defining purpose was just better than tax in those races. So if she's longer, it's, it's really a no brainer to me, but I think defining purpose is kind of the better and pointed to this spot to kind of get back on track. What about Merlotta? Uh, you know, I, I, I think the public will default to Merlotta, um, because, you know, part of the connections and then just kind of looking for that new face that's going to step up in this spot. But uh, 
she wasn't as strong in those races, had a lot of favorable trips in her three wins, uh, just kind of favorable, favorable trips and favorable fields where it was spots that she was supposed to win. Um, didn't, didn't show enough in, in the black eyed Susan, um, and, and no real excuse in there in terms of a trip, just, you know, has to prove it on class. And I thought if you're, if you're kind of looking for one that's maybe on the improve, a uh, horse that's name doesn't do her justice is Lily Pooh. That was that um, what I was going to ask you about. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, kind of a S word name uh, for, for this type of horse, but, you know, going back to, to Del Mar, she was running really good races out at Del Mar. Those were not easy spots and improving speed figures um, in, in those races had the bit of a, a layoff, the barn change and and now has been on the improve again she's improved winning the cal cup oaks she ran a very good race in the summer oaks to finish third that was not a good ride by rispoli she was held up she had to sit in traffic and making her move and um uh, window shopping i think is is very good a very good horse for for mandela so i think if, if we're kind of looking for one that maybe is going to kind of step up in this spot haven't seen the best of yet i i'd give lily Pooh the edge over merlaza Okay. Yeah. And uh, Lily Pooh's shorter on the line, but I, I can't see Merlaza yeah. being longer than Lily Pooh. So, and like you said, we both agree. So, it must be what's going to happen. <laughs> if only they're that easy. Uh, well, that brings us well, to. I mean, the you know, to, to, sort of aside before, because I know we're kind of have to wrap up soon, but. Um, uh, you know, a big part of handicapping is handicapping the public, right? It's not just, Absolutely. it's not just handicapping the horses. So, you know, even though you're not making a morning line, you know, you're, you're making a value line, or at least you're trying to project what the public is going to do, because that's going to influence, you know, your opinion. So uh, I think there is something that both of us saying these horses, just based on the connections alone, are going to be right. short. No, and really, you know, for me, I struggle with having the conviction to then actually follow through because it's tough getting beat by horses you really like. Uh, but, you know, when when you just know uh, you're not getting t two to one, you, you have to be willing to either A, look elsewhere and think differently or, or B, again, passing, it's fine. Um, there's takeout. So the board isn't always going to offer you value uh, where I think we actually – might get some value, especially with the news that Ray's Kane is staying in, uh, not because I like him, but he did run in the Derby. So, you know, hopefully that'll take a little bit of money. But uh, anyway, in the Indiana Derby, uh, it, it's a two horse race for me. And I really wish uh, Indiana wasn't so forward in this case, because it verifying it, it could be over going into the turn. But if it's not, Caglius Cagliostro, uh, I thought the one-turn mile at Churchill was a race that absolutely competes here. Now it's to stretch out and do it at two turns and without Lasix, uh, but verifying I think is going to be even money. Uh, and that to me means we're, we're, we, me, is going to get the price I want at Cagliostro to answer the questions. Uh, it's just one of those two for me. Yeah, Um uh, I'll touch on a couple things. I mean, Cagliostro, I think people could be like, okay, well, the horse, the two races that the horse didn't run on Lasix or didn't have Lasix were the horse's worst races. But I think there's more to the story than the Lasix. And I think that's an easy an easy default because the debut was actually quite good at Saratoga. Going seven furlongs, not easy to do. Solid speed figure. Um, and then another one of those horses that had a layoff that followed. So it's just, you know, it's, tough, tough to say. Um, and then as far as the Louisiana Derby, um, I just think it, it wasn't, it wasn't their day in more ways than one. They were fractious in the gate, broke through. They did not run off, but was held, was kind of, uh, you know, you just don't like to see that. And then the way that that race played out with Kings Barn, just, you know, coasting gate to wire. I mean, just kind of a race that you can almost just draw a line through for everybody. And I think as other races, you mentioned the one turn mile, and even the fairgrounds races, those are races around two turns. Those are all really strong speed figures. So I think that those races represent this horse, and I don't think it has anything to do with Lasix. And those races, to me, are stronger, if not as strong as verifying. I'm not a verifying fan. I could see this horse winning just because more than anything is his ability to show tactical speed, and that just might be enough. But he's had extremely favorable trips and lost without – you know, without excuse. 
And the times that he's been even just kind of slightly tested or slightly less than ideal, he's just done. He's just done nothing. And hmm. so those are horses to me at short prices. If verifying wins, I can turn the page so easily on this race. But a horse like Cagliostro, who I think is, you know, an improving type, is as fast, has has even more upside. Second star at the layoff, probably pointing to this race. Verifying, they're probably pointing to those other races. And now they're running here. Just, you know, why not? Um, act a fool. I hope they're going to send. I don't think he's fast enough, but I think he can be an absolute menace in here. And then um, the other horse, uh, I know you're not a fan of race cane. I, I, I like race cane a little bit in here. Um, I, I think the distance change is better for him um, overall. And you just bluegrass, bluegrass is actually sneaky good, but Kentucky Derby, Matt Wynn just wasn't the right spot for this horse. This is probably a better spot. Transect um, had, had an, is another one of those horses that the Gotham is an excuse. Just Telemo and this horse just did not get along. I called it on another podcast, like just a bad first date where just everything that goes wrong <laughs> went wrong. And you just can forget it and move on. And he's not fast enough, but um, another horse that seems pointed to the spot. He ran on this track around two turns, got some confidence, was in against older horses, did what needed to be done, had to show some class that day just to prove that he was best in there. I don't think he's a need the lead type, but I think he's a horse that that can show early speed just kind of naturally. And I think he's well meant in this spot. And if we haven't seen the best from him, he's not too far off number wise. And another horse, if you mentioned, you know, you like those inside posts, <laughs> like he would upgrade from that as well. Yeah. I, I, I thought Transec definitely, uh, you know, to me, especially, you know, verifying is no great shakes and Cagliostro, I could see being a little lower than six to one anyway, but Transec getting in the number uh, with either of those is something I'd like uh, to me. Hey, strike. I mean, we'll see if actually is the second choice at three to one uh, was, well, you, you had him, that, you had him last time. I'll tap the sign for you on this one yeah, when you needed to was, have uh, him to close out a try. So that was a, uh, that was a nice sweat waiting yeah. uh, the, the full second uh, after the, the two monsters uh, <laughs> traits to have five and seven lengths ahead. But yeah, I mean, against this group, I mean, going to be running late again, uh, but now all of a sudden you've, you've gone from 18 to one last time to, I guess, three to one. I mean, I, I don't know that they will be that low, but uh, yeah, I, that, that to yeah. me is the one I'd love to be. Cause I, I think a lot of people play it similarly knowing he'll close and well, I got to use him in your try and well, I don't got to use him. No, not at, not at, you're right. I, mean, I think three, on three the stage one, could uh, be running a, late too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. I don't know a lot about Luis Fuentes. Looks like he's a Texas guy, but Asmussen willing to to bring him up for a shot. I mean, that horse was – he wasn't that good at Oakland Park. He was pretty much crushed pretty soundly in all those races, and he was much the best in that um, optional allowance race. So major class test for this horse. Indeed, yeah. To uh, move from Oaklawn to Lone Star, and then you're three to five. I, I definitely think speaks to yeah the the differences in class there. Uh, so, w would you say? Kat, I know you're you're reticent on the the top pick, but it is the Indiana Derby. I mean, would you say Cagliostro uh, would, would be yeah, the one I'm, you're most excited to? I'm, I'm one eight. I mean, into? I'm I'm most I'm most excited to not play verifying. Right. Because and his ITP I, says the I'm best a opinion person. you can have is events the favorite. Yeah, and that's pretty much where you should always start your your handicapping and playable races, which which would lead you to horses like Cagliostro, and then get excited about them because you have knocks on the favorite. You're not just you know throwing things up against the wall and seeing seeing what sticks. Um, but yeah, Cagliostro for sure makes a lot of sense, and then Transat. Those are the two that I'm I'm leaning on in this race. All right. Uh, you and I, not not far off there. I definitely like verifying a little better than you, but see no reason. Oh, to... he can run second. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well. Just kidding. <laughs> I mean, oh, we'll see where I am in the, the contest Saturday. This, this is the last race. It's all Indiana only, mm. but uh, I would not hesitate, you know, if I needed to make a, a winning move to, to play around with getting verifying and hay strike out of it completely. Yeah, I love it. So. Well, we should promote that that is because I think there's good content on here. And obviously, 
use optics, there's a lot of information that most people won't have that's in there. Nobody's doing the trip notes for Horseshoe in Indianapolis. Nobody doesn't have a life like I do, if I said that properly. Most people have a life. I do not. I watch trip notes from Horseshoe in Indianapolis. So you can jump right you in. You don't like fun. I hate fun. I hate fun. So this is fun. And this is fun for me. This It is fun. No, I, I enjoy it as well. It'll be even more fun uh, if we have... Uh, for you able to tap the sign. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a good video. So thanks for letting me, making me force you to do this. Yeah. Uh, no, not under duress. Uh, I'm glad we did it too. And uh, I'll be especially glad if one of these 15 or, or 20 to ones get home. Uh, yeah, it's great information. And I know you're off to Hawthorne, yeah. which will have been uh, mostly completed by the time this is polished and uploaded. But uh, you, you mentioned if verifying wins, you'll turn the page. You won't turn the page to another horseshoe race because this is the last. But Hawthorne does race Sunday, correct? Absolutely. So you'll be able to, to turn the page right into the, the next day's card uh, in your backyard. Well, she is Emily Gullickson of Optics. Make sure you check that out. Uh, plenty of good information provided through them. Um, Ed DeRosa from Horse Racing Nation. We have good information, too. Uh, hopefully we gave out some winners. Good luck this weekend.